Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, significant events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. With the new year comes a new set of political issues that affect our state and particularly our region. Here to chat about the main issues on the agenda are two of our esteemed leaders from our region, Indiana State Senator Ed Charbonneau from the 5th District and Indiana State Representative Shelley Vandenberg from the 19th District. Glad you guys are both here. And Thank you know, you, I, I've discovered that it's important to point these things out, despite the fact that probably people have elected you, sometimes they don't even know the party you're with, which is surprising to me. Ed, you're our token Republican. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I've got to, got to say, Keith, I, whenever I f refer to anyone down in the legislature, and, and I think Shelley will uh, uh, confirm this, I, I never refer to anyone as a Republican or a Democrat. Because really? it does not make any difference okay. to me in, in doing my job uh, representing the constituents of the 5th District. I, I, like, I like to hear that, but I like our viewers to at least know this because they'll say, did you? Sure. Were they both the I, same party? or that? But they're surely... Well, but also, it's nice many times of the same mindset. We, we can't say that. <laughs> Very often we are, and I'm your blazing Democrat. The, <laughs> blazing. I, 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 like, I like this, and and they might be saying, "Look, they're sitting pretty close together." So does this usually happen all the time? You know, the Democrats and the Republicans sit this close together. Oh yes, oh, all yeah. the time. All the Ed time. and I get along yeah. very well. Only Honestly. at the bar. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, we were able to see eye to eye on a lot of issues. So. Are, is that the way, I see that a lot of times with our delegation from up here. Does it feel like you guys are oftentimes on the same page about a lot of things? I think so, yeah. And, and, and quite frequently, we have some pretty significant regional type issues that are, um, that, that, that we're trying to get through the, the process down in Indianapolis. And it's, it's absolutely imperative that uh, that we're all on the same page, and it's it's not it takes a lot of work beforehand in, in preparation, and but yeah, I would well, say well, that. How big do you consider our delegation? What's that number of people that we consider up here to be kind of our little group? Gosh, I've never really actually counted. I would. There's probably fifteen think, or yeah, something. I would say 16, seventeen, something like that. Yes. And I know you guys meet together and talk about some of these issues. And I think we'll kind of mm -hmm. divide the show into that a little bit of kind of what you think's on the whole agenda, but what's specifically important to us up here. So this is kind of a, let's look up ahead. What do you both see is what's on the agenda? What's going to be the big issues coming up in this, Shelley? What do you think? Of course, you can't um, not mention gay marriage, of course, because we've been talking about it for several years now. And now we're in the final stage of getting it passed through the state house and then moving it on to voters. So of course, that's a huge issue. As yeah. much as I think both of us would like it not to be, it is probably the, the issue that has become center stage. In, in, in yeah, Shelley's right, it, it's, it's been an issue that's been floating around for quite some time. And, and the, the process to do a constitutional amendment uh, requires us to pass a very specific same language in two separately elected uh, legislatures. We passed it for the first time in 2012, 11 or 12, and uh, so this is the last time it's going to go through a process. Uh, uh, I, th I think the feelings have changed quite a bit since this whole thing first hit, hit the, uh, the legislature, and it'll start in the House and uh, work its way through as as any other bill would. You know, now, some of the things I, I read, and again, you know, who knows who puts these, some of these polls together, often say that the vast majority, or a, a good majority of people in this state really don't feel that this is an important issue to deal with. I mean, is that how you s see it, too? I mean, is, is that what you hear from constituents? It's like, why are we even dealing with this? I think as time has moved along, people have um, educated themselves more about the marriage amendment First of all, it's already in Indiana law that marriage is between a man and a woman. The marriage amendment does, however, take it one step further. It's putting it into our state constitution. And it also has language stating that we will not acknowledge civil unions in our state. And I think that perhaps you know, several years ago when this first came out, people weren't aware that that second step was in there. I think that was just going a little bit too far. Um, every, every person I feel in our state deserves the same rights um, 
they're all allowed to vote equally. They should all be privileged to the same legal privileges um, in their everyday life. But it appears that you're a minority <laughs> in that opinion in the legislature, not just politically, but on this issue. Is that true? Well, we were definitely um, in the minority the last time we took a vote. That's why it has continued to move through. However, you've had a lot of Republicans come forward <clears throat> and change their opinion and say that they will be voting differently this next time. Where do you stand on this? Well, it, um, again, there's going to be a lot of discussion about this as it, it works its way through, through the process. And um, we're, we're getting input from, from both sides, and the feelings are very strong on, on both sides of this issue. And you know, when the time comes, I will uh, cast my vote. Okay, there, I, I know they're very strong. What other issues are we, we facing? Uh, in this upcoming legislature, what do you? What yeah, do you say? I, I think, and 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 the governor recently uh, rolled out his legislative agenda, and one of the big ones, uh, I, I believe, is uh, he he feels very strongly that we should, as a state, eliminate the business personal property tax, and it is a significant issue. And that's a huge uh, number, right? Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a, a billion dollars. Yes, that's a huge. Number. That's a huge number. And the, the issue of what, what makes this a little bit different or apart from the state taking legislative action to cut a, a tax that is paid to the state, the business personal property tax is something that flows directly to schools and local units of government. So when we're talking about uh, doing something that may uh, eliminate a billion dollars of taxes, uh, it, it's going to have a, a significant impact. And so there's going to have to be a whole lot of discussion go on as to how we do that. Um, Is there some preliminary comments being made about are we going to then cut total expenditures to that amount? Or are we trying to substitute a different tax. I mean, is there any talk about that, Shelley? Well, actually, um, you know, the gover governor had made comments that perhaps the the local option income tax could be increased. But that, then again, that's not something that we have control over. That's controlled by the county, and it's up to them then to pass an additional tax. Um, this issue came up in 2011 also, and it was able to be stopped at that time. We've done a lot for businesses over the years. We've cut corporate income taxes. Um, the workers' comp compensation rate in our state is amongst the lowest in the Midwest. Um, they were affected also with the property tax caps, businesses. We've had tons of businesses move into Indiana since we've done just these few things. We also offer lots of other incentives that were much um, less publicized, but are also available. So, so, so these are two huge issues. Huge, huge issues, but right. I, I think the, the discussion of how we replace the revenue or what we do is second, secondary to the fact that we, the, I think there is general agreement that, that the business personal property tax is, a, is something, is a negative a when, when, uh, when companies yeah. start looking for where to locate a business. And Particularly in, warehousing business. Right? E, e, well, warehousing, but but any 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 company that invests large amounts of, I mean, U.S. Steel, Asset business, for for business. example, um, yeah, that you know, personal uh, personal property. Um, none of the states, well, most of the states around us either don't have a personal property business personal property tax, or are on their way to eliminating it. Uh, Kentucky, I think, still does, but it is far lower than, than what ours is. So uh, th there can't be any question that it's, it's something that companies look at and is a significant factor when, when they're making a decision on where to locate a business and whether or not they're going to come to Indiana. And, and I think Indiana is doing a, an excellent job with the Victor Smith and Eric Doden from the Indiana Economic Development Corporation going out all over, scouring the country, scouring the world, hunting down job opportunities uh, to come to Indiana. That's one issue that still is, is out there that we need to address. What I want to make sure we do in this show is try to <clears throat> put these issues on the table so that we can get our 
viewers and, and our citizens to start looking and trying to follow some of these issues. Uh, what, are the, what else do you see is going to be on the agenda besides these two issues? Another one you see? Well, of course, a big issue already has become uh, kind of the war on the second floor, if you will, between our governor and our state superintendent, uh, Glenda Ritz. So I expect That's to see... That's in the paper all the time. <laughs> I expect to see some legislation early on that will try to make that position appointed. We had that legislation last year. Um, Bob Baining, who is the chairman of the House Education Committee, actually authored that bill. Um, I think that was to try to save Tony Bennett if he were to lose. Um, they knew he had carried the water for the governor, Governor Daniels, um, over his um, tenor and had you know, put those education changes into place and that he would be the one to pay probably for it. And uh, they'll be trying to probably do that again so this year. So the battle's going to come to a wider mm -hmm. venue, it, it yeah. appears. Is there another one yeah. you see, I, too? No, I, I think there are a number of issues in the education area that are going to be coming to the fore. And certainly, and again, it's one that's on the, the governor's legislative mm -hmm. agenda, is, is paying for uh, pre-K education mm -hmm. for needy families. And... Um, you know, that, that's another, another one that comes with a price tag. Well, I think everybody agrees it would be a good thing to do, that the question becomes, uh, and it's, it always is, is kind of a balancing situation. Uh, what, you know, what, what is the appropriate thing to do at any point in time? And we're sitting with um, you know, a $2 billion surplus, but when it costs more than $50 million a day, to run state government, you can plow through something like that relatively quickly. So just because it sounds like a big number, it doesn't mean that we can even should be, um, you know, cutting into it. Uh, we've done a good job of being fiscally responsible. Yeah. Do our do people weigh in with you all on how they feel about these? Does an average citizen do you hear from people? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I mean, and I'll even say, do you hear from people in a constructive way? Because I know you hear com about people who just call mm -hmm. to complain and mm -hmm. bend your ear and just really they're pounding the table. But do you hear, how often do you hear kind of thoughtful kind of comments, you know, where people say, let me just kind of talk about the pros and cons about this with you a little bit. How often do you hear that? We hear that a lot. I would say yeah. probably people just calling to say, hey, you're doing a great job is, um, probably far and fewer between than the people that want to pick up the phone to tell you, you know, that they want you to support something, vote against something, or just to tell you, you know, they don't like the way you're doing something. Mm -hmm. um, but it is they very, it's, they, it's they appreciated. They you up and say that, right? Oh, sure. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. it is appreciated um, that they take the time no matter what. Um, I admire them for taking the time out of their day, as busy as everybody is, to pick up the phone and be interested in what's happening in state government because we need more people that are aware of what's going on. So you still want more. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you yeah. Know, one of the, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the governor and the pre-K uh, education um, uh, and, and the, the elimination of the business personal property tax. Those are two issues that I have gotten a, 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 an inordinate number of, I, I, I would say, very thoughtful emails from from constituents uh, just liking what is going on in education, but kind of making the point that look, maybe maybe enough is enough for a while, or or really you know we support these things, but you know maybe there's a better way of of getting to the end point. What do you see as some of the issues that you are our delegations trying to carry down that we need to have happen up here this year? I think uh, Shelly's really like. <laughs> yeah, well, that's easy. Uh, probably the expansion of the South Shore, yeah, wouldn't you say, Ed? Only because our congressman is, you yeah. know, very passionate that, that's, about that, and and we're all very supportive. You yeah. know, the expansion is just a huge yeah. number of dollars yeah. to try to come and, up with. And you, you talk about uh, you talked very early on about the the delegation being together on an issue, and when. And, and, you know, I think we all look at how Marion County seems to get together, get their act together, and are very successful legislatively. And I think over time we've finally grown to understand that, that we need to be doing the same thing and, and 
we're, we're I think we're all on on the mark on, on this. And one. the reauthorization of the RDA, the Regional Development Authority, that's also on the agenda mm -hmm. coming up, yes. correct? And yes. that's again, do you feel like our delegation's pretty together on that issue? I, I think for yes. the most part, yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, is there anything else we have? I mean, those are two huge issues. Mm -hmm. Hugh, are, are there some other ones? I mean, that are fairly major for our whole region. No, that, I don't. I don't those think the two so. Driving ones. Yeah, one of the the neat things that's popped up now. I don't know if what we can do in the legislature uh, is is the whole Boeing issue, uh, where they're now out looking for a site maybe to put something like 8,500 employees and it, it kind of circles back to what we discussed early on in 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 the show today on the the business friendly the business uh, uh, atmosphere the triple-a bond rating in in indiana and you look at the gary airport and they need a they say a nine thousand foot runway well gary's eighty nine hundred once it's expanded so all, all of the things on paper that they say they need, we have up here. Uh, Does that a become a legislative shot, issue? Uh, no, no. Okay. That's what I was saying. It, it's, it, I think, something that we would all be on board. I don't know if there's anything legislatively that, uh, that we could do to, uh, to improve it. So what's the, the, the general pre-tenor of the legislature at this point? I mean, we've had a couple of years that I think a number of people described as probably bloody, <laughs> just were some really hard years, some lot of bad things done, I think, by a lot of folks. What are we expecting in this upcoming? Is there, are we gonna be a little more reasonable? Are we going to be able to work together? I'm always very hopeful, <laughs> and I always go in um, so excited and willing to work together, and then it's always those very divisive pieces of legislation that then just completely suck all of the glory out of that. And then you end up, you know, with tension within the chamber. Um, by the end, at least for me, because I've been in the minority, now this will be my fourth year in the minority, um, it ends up to be very hard to go in day in and day out in those last couple of weeks. Um, and I pray every year that it, it doesn't end up like that, you know, because we have good friendships. And uh, you know you work really hard to build those friendships across the aisle, and and it could take just a couple bad days to completely ruin that. It really takes. So you're trying to be hopeful at this. Well, point. I'm always hopeful. Okay. Always, and I always go in with a great attitude that we're going to work together, that we're going to listen more to each other with an open mind to see where the person is actually coming from, not just say I hear what you're saying, but actually listen and try to put yourself in that person's position to understand their argument. How do you, do you, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I don't believe uh, right now anyway that are, there are really some issues that you can identify that are very going to be very uh, divisive, divisive yeah. Uh, yeah, or, or, or create uh, the kinds of problems that, uh, that Shelley's uh, you know, uh, alluding to. Um, you know the, the the one that has very strong feelings on both sides. Again, we talked about it already. Is the marriage amendment, but uh, that's going to go through its process, and um, uh, I, 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 either it's going to happen real fast, or um, you know, you know, Shelley, as you talked about that, it makes me wonder. <clears throat> do, do we find the minority party always kind of trying to be hopeful because you're kind of in that? that seat of not having um, the power, so you kind of got to, I hope you'll play well with me? Well, you know, it's a very different situation. I mean, the first two years, at least, we had quorum powers, um, so we weren't really insignificant in the state house, Democrats. But now you have two chambers, both the Senate and the House, that can basically do business without any Democrats on the floor. And then you can have legislation moved to our governor, of course, without any Democrats present there either. So. It makes it more difficult. Um, it, it makes it more difficult, but, but somebody like Shelley that has developed relationships. I mean, I'm a firm believer, as you well know, Keith, I, th I think that you know, whatever business we're in, we're in the business of people in relationships. And if you build those relationships, uh, she may not be able to today and the, the, the tables could be turned in five years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the way things are. 
but you know, today she needs help, and, and she, so she deals with friends who, uh, who can you know, maybe get legislation passed or help, help get pet legislation passed that uh, uh, on her own couldn't be done, but that's what it's all about. We're, we're, we're down to about 30 seconds here, so if there's just kind of one message you want to give out to our viewers about this upcoming session, what would it be in about 10 seconds? It would be um, that you know we're here to work together for the region, for the state of Indiana, and we have their best interest at heart always. Okay. Yeah, I think there will be a lot done to help a job uh, creation, economic development in the state, and and promote uh, education and uh, quality uh, teachers in the classroom. Well, I know this is a short session, so we'll try to get a couple of people back here midway so we can kind of get an update and try to educate people so they can weigh in. And thank you both for taking the time to come by and, and share these thoughts with us. Thank you Thanks, very much. Kate. Merry All Christmas. Right. All right. Yeah. To you too. Our governor in Indiana is proposing a tax cut for corporate taxes. It was his campaign promise and there are many who are strongly supporting his, this proposal. They are in step with a large number of citizens who are asking and many times demanding that government cut back on its size, spending and intervention into our lives. A tax cut of any sort seems to accomplish all of those requirements in one single action. Yet I wonder, are they asking what will be cut back? If you take in less, you spend less. Remember, this is Indiana, where we do not spend what we don't have. During these past few years, our state and local governments have cut back, streamlined, and modified their spending. You will often hear our elected officials and administrators say that they are doing more with less, which is good in some ways. At other times, they are stretching our resources to a breaking point, not doing it well, or postponing important needs, not wants. We are getting to a point where our leaders are beginning to respond to our citizens by asking, what do you want to give up? You all know the phrase, you get what you pay for. Do you remember buying that $10 pair of shoes that created blisters and killed your feet? How about that $7 haircut that made everyone gasp? Or the bargain kitchen appliance that worked once? If our local governments have revenue cutbacks, it follows that they must reduce expenditures somewhere. Do we have one fewer cop? garbage picked up less frequently, higher student to teacher ratios, more potholes to maneuver around? What do we do without? Or do we wait until the old sewer line collapses, close the unsafe bridge, let the street lights burn out? I'm not trying to scare anyone, rather ask the inevitable question that must be addressed when there is less revenue. So next time you hear the rally cry of let's reduce taxes, ask the advocate of that comment, what do you want to cut back? Is it tied to a revenue stream or mandated by law? Is it fat? or are you asking for a reduction of services? In the end, it is the same as buying any product or service. You get what you pay for. Thanks for watching Lakeshore Focus today. We'd like to hear from you about our show or the comments I just made. Your views are important to us at Lakeshore Public Television, so email us at focus at lakeshorepublicmedia.org or reach us through our website, which is listed on your screen. Join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying make a positive difference in our world today and have a happy holiday.